why would someone want to do watercolor over hand lettering or hand lettering over watercolor? In this video, you'll see hand lettering and watercolor compared in three specific aspects, cost, difficulty level, and style. If you're new here, I'm Sarah from Ensign Insights. Keep in mind that I'm a hand letterer, so that's where I'm coming from, but I actually use watercolor often with my hand lettering. And to keep it fair, I will also share with you some thoughts from my friend Colby, who is a watercolor artist from this writing desk. The goal of this video is not to convince you that one is better than the other because it's not like you have to only choose one. You can definitely do both, but maybe you don't have time to do both right now. So this comparison may help you know which one to start with. Number one, the cost. Which one costs more, hand lettering or watercolor? You could argue that either one is more expensive depending on what supplies you're getting. So let's just talk about when you are first starting out. What's involved when it comes to first getting supplies? With hand lettering, you will need a pen and paper, which most people already have. So you can start hand lettering right now for basically nothing. That is, if you are okay doing monoline lettering or faux calligraphy, if you want to get actual brush pens, you can get some decent brush pens and paper for a reasonable price. For watercolor, you can't just use the pen you already have, like with hand lettering, so you have to actually buy watercolor. You also can't do it with any paper because you need actual watercolor paper. And you also need to get some kind of paintbrush. I will say that expensive watercolor is a lot more expensive than expensive brush pens. But you can use brush pens as watercolor if you're switching from hand lettering to watercolor and you already have brush pens. For the purpose of this video, let's talk about beginner watercolors because I know you love my comparison videos. So a couple years ago, I recorded these swatches testing out some cheap watercolor. I never found a use for these until this video. I tested Reeves watercolor tubes because they were like $5 or something at Michael's. I also tested this cheap brand from Hobby Lobby. They were the cheapest watercolor from each store and I actually didn't like either of them. They were pretty chalky. I've also tried this $5 watercolor pen from Michael's and it's fine to start but it's also pretty chalky. So I recently got rid of it in my desk declutter. As for nicer pan watercolors, I have tried these Jane Davenport and they're good. Definitely not professional grade, but I do like these colors and I still pull these out every once in a while. The watercolor for beginners I see recommended the most often is this Primo watercolor. They have so many different sets of colors and they're great to start with. It's definitely a reasonable price, especially as a beginner. From a watercolor artist's perspective, Colby said she likes using student grade watercolor paper when doing watercolor lettering because you can get smoother edges for your letters. Using professional grade paper for big watercolor pieces can hold more water and keeps the colors more vibrant and you want to get that really textured look. So of course, for actual watercolor, that's going to be a bit more expensive. Basically, you can find some inexpensive watercolor supplies just like you can find inexpensive hand lettering supplies. So it comes down to the fact that watercolor, you have to have more supplies than with hand lettering right from the beginning. With hand lettering, you need a pen and paper. The cost of those will vary and depending on what supplies you have, but that's all you need. With watercolor, you need paint and paper and a paintbrush and a jar of water and something to clean your brush with and possibly a palette to mix your colors on. The setup requires a little bit more, even just to start. Because you're going to invest more for supplies in watercolor, it only makes sense that you'd want to invest a little more in learning how to use them so you're getting the most out of them. Colby has a watercolor course that's open for enrollment right now until March 10th. It's called Exploring Watercolor 101. I will tell you a little more about that, but let's go to the second aspect in our comparison. Number two, difficulty level. Learning anything new can be difficult, right? But is lettering or watercolor harder to learn? This one is tough, so if you disagree with me, let me know. 
In my opinion, hand lettering is a little easier to start because everyone learns how to write the alphabet from a very young age. You may have bad handwriting, but you are at least comfortable with the alphabet. You will at least have a reference point to get started. With watercolor, you may not have something like that to draw on. And there are more things to consider, like you have to know color theory, you have to know how colors will mix together. But you can also argue that watercolor is easier because you don't have to be as precise and it doesn't have to be legible because there are no words. I also think one or the other will be harder for different people depending on your experiences. So it's more important to focus on where your interest is. Colby actually started with hand lettering several years ago and she said she was glad she started with a brush pen first so that when she was learning to use a paintbrush it didn't feel so clumsy. Brush pens have firm nibs instead of bristles like paintbrushes which can be harder to control. Colby gradually transitioned from hand lettering to watercolor because at first she wanted to make fun backgrounds for her lettering. She started doing that more and more and after a couple months she realized that she hadn't done any lettering in a while and decided to pivot and lean into watercolor. So that's a pretty cool example of just going with what interests you at the time. You don't have to know the end from the beginning. She said she likes that hand lettering and watercolor both have simple recipes. For example, hand lettering is the basic strokes pieced together. That's its recipe. Colby said when she teaches watercolor landscapes, she uses a simple recipe and you break it down into bite-sized pieces to practice those techniques. Let's remember, if you're really interested in something, with enough practice, you can learn it no matter how difficult it is. Also, it's important to know what resources you have to learn something new. You can learn anything for free on YouTube and blogs nowadays, right? If you want more focused learning, it may be worth investing in a resource to learn from someone. Before we get into the third aspect in our comparison, let me give you a peek into Colby's course. Colby let me have a look in her Exploring Watercolor 101 course to see if I wanted to be an affiliate and share it with you. And I loved what I saw. I love that her course breaks down the recipe of watercolor into bite-sized pieces. It's a pretty extensive course starting with the basics and going beyond what I've learned from YouTube tutorials. So if you're really serious about wanting to learn watercolor, this might be a great fit for you. She has so many different projects to help you learn and practice specific watercolor techniques. I like that she includes what techniques you're practicing with each project so you know that it has a specific purpose. I will leave a link to her course below if that sounds like a good fit to you. But now maybe you're thinking, how do I know if this is for me? That brings me to our third aspect that we're comparing. Number three, style. So let's compare the style of hand lettering versus watercolor. There are so many styles within hand lettering and so many styles within watercolor, right? Let's just talk about what aspects of watercolor is going to draw you in and what aspects of hand lettering is going to draw you in. What style are you? Typically, I see that someone who likes to hand letter wants to express themselves with words, Whereas in watercolor, someone may prefer to express themselves in images, or maybe they have too many words to write. With hand lettering, you have a little more control over your pen, so you can be more precise. With watercolor, it definitely has a mind of its own, and there's only so much you can control. For the most part, you just have to learn how to work with the watercolor and learn exactly what it does, since you can't control it. For some people, that can be really frustrating to not be able to have that control. And the whole point of having a creative outlet is to find something that helps you express yourself. For me, when I started dabbling in watercolor, it actually helped me to let go a little and I learned how to just let it be and not try to get everything so perfect. In that way, it was a good thing for me and even helped me to let go of perfection in my own hand lettering styles. To give you a side-by-side -side example of hand lettering and watercolor, look at this. This is my new hand lettering book next to Colby's watercolor book. Her book is specifically about watercolor landscapes and it's so beautiful. 
I'm not comparing these to decide which book is better because that's like comparing apples to oranges. <laughs> the books themselves are two different, but it gives a good representation of hand lettering versus watercolor. In my hand lettering book, there are a lot of worksheets to practice your hand lettering and learn the basic letter forms, connecting letters, laying out quotes, and then there are some projects with different alphabet styles. In Colby's watercolor book, you start with the basic techniques of how watercolor works and how to use your paintbrush and the color wheel. And then throughout the book, there are 30 projects that teach different aspects of watercolor as you go through them. You're not practicing on worksheets. You're painting a landscape to practice different techniques. I tried this beautiful mountain landscape from her book and I had a little trouble with the trees, so I need to practice my trees a little bit more. Maybe I need to perfect that technique, but I love how she just made it so simple. I've done a lot of watercolor gradients, mostly just for backgrounds in my lettering, but I don't typically do something like mountains, but I felt that as I followed along with this project, I knew exactly what to do for each step. With all of that said, I think hand lettering and watercolor can definitely go hand in hand and be used together. I'm so curious to hear what draws you to hand lettering or watercolor. Why did you get into it? And if you're just here for the lettering, the most common way that I use watercolor with my lettering is watercolor backgrounds using brush pens. I have a playlist with that right here. I will see you there.